In this section, we're going to go through the four lenses uh, for uh, individual flow, and then in the following videos, we'll go through uh, the additional lenses for team flow, product flow, and organizational flow. The leadership takeaways for this section for individual flow are basically the four lenses themselves, which I mentioned earlier. That's the individual, team, product, and organizational lenses. We're going to briefly look at the four whys and then individual flow, how to enter and sustain a state of individual flow. Plus, uh, we're going to look at some of the quotes uh, directly from our book, Flow, uh, to help you try to get a better understanding of what we're talking about when we're talking about individual flow. For the most of the balance of this presentation, we're going to be looking at flow through these four lenses. It's a four box. I love four boxes. It's part of my management consulting background. Uh, it's easy to use. It's easy to communicate and helps you quickly uh, sort what it is that you're trying to solve from a team or product or organizational perspective or even an individual perspective. This is adapted from a presentation that I saw at the Scrum Gathering Las Vegas many, many years ago that was done by Lisa Atkins and Michael Spade. Uh, they used to use a box that was I, we, it, its. Um, I don't remember the original author of that. I think it was Ken Weber. Um, <clears throat> I don't agree with his uh, beginning points and how he uses those, but this has uh, gradually morphed over into a very useful um, pattern and model to help people understand what it is that we're talking about in flow and to help them think in multiple dimensions at the same time. The purpose of these four lenses is to help you enter into and maintain a high state of high performance as an individual, as a team. Product, by the way, if I haven't already mentioned it, includes program management, process management, and line management, as well as the uh, product marketing and product development management or the product development life cycle, whichever way you want to identify that. And then organization includes everything from portfolio management and uh, portfolio governance all the way up to the executive C-suite leadership. And flow is uh, basically begins in that box and goes from that perspective out into the other three boxes. And so that's something that makes flow unique. And because so many organizations use so many different frameworks and methodologies, we've made sure that flow is methodology agnostic so that any organization will benefit from using and applying the mindset and tool set that we teach in flow. In flow, we've uh, leveraged the work of Paul DeModica, who wrote the book Value Forward Selling. I highly recommend that book to anybody who wants to be a better leader, period. Uh, there's quite a few things in that book that are really good, including learning to speak the vocabulary that executives speak. So even if you never become an executive, uh, you'll become a much more effective and better manager and leader in the role that you're in if you learn to communicate with your executive teams better and better. And... Paul's observation, and he was the one that 
uh, came up with the concept of uh, sales value proposition in the late 90s. That was him, or early 2000s, whenever that one came out. Anyways, he made the observation that there were typically, in his book, three reasons that a customer or an executive would do a pro project or assignment, and that was basically the only reasons they were going to do it is to increase revenue, decrease or get rid of costs, and either get rid of or mitigate risk. Those were the three. And over time, we've added a fourth one is do the right thing. Now on this list, it could probably be moved to the top, but uh, we still include it on the list because typically if you're doing those three things above, all of those should fall into the category of doing the right thing should. Doesn't mean they always do, but they should. And so these are the four primary reasons an organization either buys or builds a product and or does a project. Now, in this box, through this lens, I mentioned it on the other slide, product also includes programs, processes, and line management, which is part of process management. And so the four whys, when we talk, you know, you'll hear about five whys in Agile of how to do root cause analysis. But this four why is why a company will either invest in, buy or build a product or do a project or assignment. These next 10 or 11 slides are the heart and soul of flow. Why would you use it? And hopefully I'm going to be helping you understand what's in it for me individually, what's in it for my team, what's in it for my product program process or organization that I lead, and then lastly what's in it for my portfolios and the executives that would be involved. Flow is designed to help you be more consistent. It's duplicatable. It helps you create a sustainable pace while you're pursuing personal excellence and transformation. In other words, what we're trying to do is increase the value of your personal brand and the wow that you're delivering to your organization. Individual flow helps you enter into a sustainable state of flow and deliver the consistent remarkable results that derive from vision, mission, purpose, and everything that we teach. Now, you need to take the mindset models and frameworks out of our books, training videos, real world exercises, and apply them in real life. It doesn't do any good for you to read it and go, yeah, that's good, <laughs> and then not actually use it. So hopefully we're giving you tools as an individual that you can use immediately, that you can walk out and use tomorrow, and increase your effectiveness, your value, the value of your brand, and just help you overall be better and better and better at what you do. As I mentioned with uh, Paul DeModica's book on learning how to communicate more effectively and better with your organization's leadership, Every executive needs this, okay? So if you, as an individual, are learning to do that, you will capture the your executive's attention, hopefully in a good way, okay? <laughs> because in reality, almost 90% of everything we do in business boils down to communication. Back 10, 15 years ago, when I was actively teaching project management and project managers helping prepare them to pass the project management professional. We used to teach that project management is 80% communications. Well, actually it's more than that. It's probably 90% and it doesn't matter if you use 
traditional methodologies or something in between or agile methodologies and scrum it's all communication and so we will give you the tools that help you communicate better and better with your organization and your organization's leadership and you'll be able to duplicate these remarkable results it's basically success breeds success as you get better and better at applying these tools you're going to go, oh, wow, this works. And it's going to energize you and breathe life into you, what you're doing and what you're delivering to the organization. That alone <laughs> should be enough to say, okay, I need this. But uh, what's in it for you is you're going to become better as a leader by learning the principles, the mindset, and the tool set that we deliver in Flow. In our book Flow, we quoted a number of other books, including uh, Dr. Mihai Chichex Mihai in his book Flow from the early 70s, where he pointed out the highest, most satisfying experience in people's lives were when they were in Flow. In Flow, people live so deeply in the moment and felt so utterly in control that their sense of time, place, and even self melted away. They were autonomous, of course, but more than that, they were engaged. And that's a great quote, especially when you look at the worldwide statistics for employee engagement, and we look at those throughout this presentation at least one or two different times. Daniel Pink utilizes Dr. Chichex Mihai's original research and book uh, on flow as the basis for his book, Drive, and he depicts flow this way. One source of frustration in the workplace is the frequent mismatch between what people must do and what people can do. When what they must do exceeds their capabilities, the result is anxiety. And uh, when what they must do falls short of their capabilities, the result is boredom. So it goes both ways. But when the match is just right, the results can be glorious. This is the essence of flow. And for the portion about anxiety, we actually include anxiety as one of the items that we're looking for in the flow friction analysis. David Allen put it this way, there's a way to get a grip on it all, stay relaxed, and get meaningful things done with minimal effort across the whole spectrum of your life and work. You can experience what the martial artists call a mind like water and what top athletes refer to as the zone within the complex world in which you're engaged. In fact, you probably have already been in this state from time to time. And in our book, what we're striving to do is give you not just tool sets, but the mindset to be able to enter into individual and team and product and organization states of flow. Uh, Stephen Kotler put it this way, and I like this one. Technically, flow is defined as an optimal state of consciousness where we feel our best and perform our best. So there's a whole number of books out there. And our book isn't here to replace those. We build on these other books. And so you need to decide for yourself how you want to enter into an individual state of flow. So in this section, we just did a brief overview on the four lenses, individual team, product, and organization, the four whys of why we would do anything, plus how to enter into and sustain a state of individual flow. So to apply this, think about what steps you need to take to enter into individual flow. What would that perfect day look like at work, at home? What are the blockers, obstacles preventing you from entering into flow? Okay, so you might want to think about that, write those down. 
for example, am I using a T-shaped? So you literally take blue tape uh, and make a T on your desk. Left side is to do, right side is done. <laughs> or as w one of the people that I worked with, he switched um, done to work harder. <laughs> uh, are you using a tool like that, making it big and visible so that your team and other stakeholders can see what it is that you're working on? It's a great way to lead by example and demonstrate here's a method that I use to make my work transparent, big, and visible. And are you using some other time and task management system? I think everybody's calendar in Microsoft Outlook is probably totally filled up every week with tons of meetings. If you're using uh, the Microsoft tools, they even have a task manager in there if you want to keep a short checklist of high priority to-dos that you want to get done for the day. And again, uh, those that have signed up for the FCP Plus, uh, this, uh, these types of um, ideas and questions and things like that will be discussed during the live facilitator-led Zoom session.